Now, a couple of months ago, I did a review of a new Copilot Plus PC from Asus. It was the Asus VivoBook S15, a 15-inch OLED display on that one. It's 15.6 to be specific, really gorgeous actually. And it was running the brand new Snapdragon X Elite processor, the 78100 from Qualcomm. Now that has 12 cores and we saw the performance was actually pretty good. Got good battery life and an overall pretty nice design and it didn't break the bank all that much. It came in at around $1,200 to $1,300, which seems like a lot actually, now that I think about it. So there is a more budget friendly variant that they just released. It's the Snapdragon X Plus, the X1 Plus, which is the 42100, I think I got that right. It has eight cores instead of the 10 cores that we found on the previous version of the Plus, and it has four less cores than the X Elite, that of course at 12. So we're gonna see if this more budget friendly version can bring a lot to the table in terms of battery life, good enough performance, and of course that same design. We're gonna take a look at it here today. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is the Asus VivoBook S15 OLED with this new Snapdragon X Plus here for 2024, coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just wanna let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure and pursuant to the FTC guidelines, I'm not being paid by Asus, I'm not being sponsored by Asus. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Asus is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Asus, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, we took a look at the more expensive version, the Asus VivoBook S15 running the Snapdragon Dragon X Elite, and that came in at $1,299 when it was first released. It's now on sale for a discount of $77 off, so $1,222.99, but of course, this one comes in at a more budget-friendly price, $899.99, and you are getting a lot of the same features, just not as many cores and not as much performance, but you are getting great battery life, good enough performance, and really good efficiency. So for those interested, I'll leave links for everything in the description below. Now, physically, they're pretty much the same, although they have different colors. This is the neutral black, and I will say this, it does show quite a bit more fingerprints than the cool silver that I looked at with the one running the Snapdragon X. Elite. And the only other difference is the logo is different on the lid. Other than that, these are physically the same from one another. So that is pretty interesting. So if you are getting it, you're getting the same physical attributes, the same all metal design, the same premium feel. I think they did a really good job in terms of the build and the overall quality. All right, let's get a measurement of the weight with just the laptop alone. You're looking at 1.421 kilograms, and that is three pounds. 2.2 ounces and with the power charger you're looking at three pounds 9.8 ounces which comes out to 1.64 kilograms all in for a total travel weight not too bad and just for a quick reference, you're looking at 1.429 kilograms on that X Elite version. And with the power charger, you're looking at 1.705 kilograms or 3.758 pounds all in. Slightly heavier than the X Plus model. What's interesting, they also give you the extension cord with that X Elite model. I didn't see that in the box with the X Plus. Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side are two USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports. And on the right side is an HDMI 2.1 TMDS port, two USB Type-C 4.0 ports, and one 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack, and a micro SD card reader. Okay, let's take a look internally here, and you'll notice those two fans for cooling will get into the thermal performance later on, and you'll notice that 70-watt-hour battery will get into that battery life later on as well. Now, as far as the RAM, that is soldered into the motherboard, 16 gigabytes in this model, and it is LPDDR5X RAM running at the 8448 megatransfers per second, so it's fast, and it is running in dual-channel mode. Now, you'll notice that M.2 2280 SSD NVMe, and of course, as you can see from the reads and writes, certainly fast enough what you need this laptop to do and when it comes to the wireless that is soldered in but you're looking at wi-fi 7 and a bluetooth 5.4 combo card and both working flawlessly no issues with either one and good to see wi-fi 7 here making it more future proof 
Now, when it comes to the display, they're running the exact same display. It's a 15.6-inch OLED display with a resolution of 2880 by 1620. And for those wondering, that is a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, and it has a 0.2 millisecond response time and a 120 hertz refresh rate. Now, you can peak in terms of brightness, HDR, 600 nits, so that's been pretty good. And it also has good standard dynamic range brightness. They are physically the same displays. I haven't seen any difference between the displays if you get the X Plus model or the X Elite. And they are both excellent when it comes to the coverage of the color gamut. I've looked at 100% sRGB, 96% Adobe RGB, 100% of the DCI-P3, and 94% NTSC. So if you're a content creator looking to do Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, and stuff like that, if you can get the applications to work, this is an excellent panel to do those tasks. Now, this is a non-touch display, and there's no option for touch with these Vivo Book models here. And as far as the bezels, they're pretty thin, so you get a good screen-to-body ratio. And having the 120 hertz means you're going to get that really smooth, very fluid experience. And having the 0.2 millisecond response time is going to be great when you're doing some light gaming and stuff like that. You'll notice the difference there. So overall, a really nice panel here employed by Asus. Now, this being an OLED display means you'll have to deal with a PWM or screen flickering. I detected it below about 30, 35% screen brightness. So for those sensitive to that, be aware. And as far as screen burn-in down the road, I think they do a good job here with the Asus OLED care in the settings. So there are some things that they do, features to help preserve the OLED display long-term. So this is the camera on the Asus VivoBook S15 here with the Snapdragon X Plus, the 42100 variant. This is going to be a little bit more uh, lower end in terms of the performance, although it is certainly going to be good for everyday tasks. But this is a 1080p Full HD camera. It's an IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. There's a physical shutter switch above the camera to give you more security and privacy. So you got to like that. Now, of course, this does have the NPU with the 45 tops and all that stuff with the studio effects. We've seen it before, the background blur, the auto framing, all that jazz. So it's all here. I don't have to go over it, but overall it's a pretty decent camera, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? Let me know. It has the same chiclet style keys as the X Elite model. It was comfortable for typing out documents, emails, and the like. Has a really good backlight on it, same backlight as we saw. And as far as the numeric keypad, it's there as well for those number crunchers. I found that typing on it was actually pretty comfortable and I typed pretty accurately in terms of the typing experience. It's been pretty good here. So overall, good job there. Now, when it comes to the touchpad, I found it pretty responsive when it comes to scrolling, doing all the gestures. It's nicely sized. It's not. A a haptic touchpad or anything like that it's a diving board style traditional style touchpad and i think it worked okay it was certainly good enough for what you need to do here in this laptop all right, now the Snapdragon X Plus, the 42100, is a more budget-oriented processor, and you're seeing the results here of having less cores, four less cores, in fact, than we saw on the Snapdragon X Elite version, the 78100. And as you can see, less single-core, although pretty good single-core, I would say, certainly for everyday tasks, and less multi-core. But it's not a huge difference, as you can see. And remember, you're paying about $400 less with this version, so more bang for the buck in a lot of ways. So pretty impressive multi core single core performance considering you're working with less here now as far as the graphics the adreno graphics are not going to blow you away in fact they're even less than that of the one we saw in the x elite and that's even not even good in its own right considering a lot of the games won't work and won't work properly some things are just hit or miss and that's a lot to do with arm based processing here the fact that they're not native to this but native games will certainly be good in terms of the basic games you'll be able to do that but not a gaming laptop or any stretch of the imagination imagination here. Now, the surface temperatures remain relatively cool. A couple of hot spots here and there when I was pushing it under heavy load, but when I was doing my everyday tasks, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, consuming media, it stayed relatively cool throughout, especially where you place your fingers on the keyboard, not an issue. And then it also stayed relatively cool on the bottom, but between the fans, I noticed it got about 49 degrees Celsius. But other than that, and that's of course when you're pushing this under heavy load, but other than that, it didn't get overly hot. Now, when I measured the fan noise under load, it actually got pretty loud 
loud considering that I wasn't expecting it to go over 50 decibels, but it did. But that's only when I was really pushing this. But for the most part, when you're doing your everyday tasks, it remained very quiet, actually. One of the quieter laptops out there. So it remained relatively cool and quiet if you stick to the everyday tasks. Now, battery life is really good here. Now, remember, it has a 70-watt-hour battery, and I got nearly 15 hours on the PC Mark 10 video playback test, which is a good indicator of what you can expect. Now, of course, I've been using this for the last couple of weeks. I got easily 10 to 12 hours of daily use out of this without having to plug in. That means you're going to be doing video conferencing, you're going to be doing web browsing, Microsoft Office, email, and the like, consuming media, and it's really good. I really have no complaints when it comes to longevity, in terms of battery life. And one of the other things I noticed is really great standby times with very little battery drain when in standby. So that has been really great. Now, this has stereo speakers, the Harman Kardon tuned, and it does have Dolby Atmos when it comes to spatial audio. This will not disappoint. The overall volume is good, mids are decent, and there is some bass on here. Overall, pretty nice sound, but of course, let's give it a listen. You let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now, let's give it a listen. Okay, let's bring it all home. And what do I think about this version of the VivoBook S15 running that Snapdragon X Plus? And I gotta say, a lot to like here. Now let's talk about price here. $899 versus $1299 of the Snapdragon X Elite model, and that's a $400 difference, and that's a pretty significant difference. So when you're looking at the X Plus, look at the value proposition here. You're getting the same gorgeous 15.6 inch 3K OLED 120 hertz display, the same 600 nits of peak brightness. Now, single multi-core performance is still very good, very adequate for everyday tasks in terms of uh, Microsoft Office email web browsing. You're just not gonna get quite as good performance. It does have four less cores than the X Elite, so just keep that in mind. It runs cool and quiet for the most part, everyday tasks. It's got a premium build and design, pretty much the same design as its more expensive sibling. And the comfortable keyboard and touchpad is really welcome here. I like the chiclet style keys. You're looking at really good battery life. You got looking at a pretty good port selection. And I like that more affordable price. Now the negatives here, you're looking at weaker Adreno graphics and the x86 apps are hit or miss pretty much for the Snapdragon X series in general. So that is not just for this laptop, but for most laptops right now. Again, that'll get better over time. I have no doubt about that. And gaming, like I said, is hit or miss on this ARM-based processor and so forth. Some driver issues for older peripherals. Again, that'll work itself out. 16 to nine aspect ratio. Some may not like that, but I think consuming media, you won't get the black bars on the top and the bottom. So some people will like that. And then of course, there's no touchscreen option here. So some people like it, some people don't care, but just wanted to point that out but overall this is a really good value proposition again at $8.99 over at Best Buy and for those that are interested my affiliate link will be in the description below you want to save $400 and get pretty much more or less the same performance for everyday type of use maybe a little less performance but I think for that $400 you're getting a lot for the money I do recommend this here for 2024 the Asus Vivo Book S15 running that Snapdragon X Plus it brings a lot of value to the table so please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. And don't forget to check out my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.